is Rouser Radio, coming out of Lewis in East Sussex. And I'm Keith Hayes, not Jack DeMenio. Jack would never have forgiven us getting on air on time. Jack DeManio, you may ask. Well, look him up. Interesting character. Tuesday, the 21st of July, and I suppose that will bring with it its own joys and its own problems. <laughs> Certainly, if you have a bill coming in today, it's a problem. If you have a happy date, it's joy. And I wonder how many will be off to the seaside, because that suddenly crossed my mind this morning uh, how happy it would be to go down onto the beach not have all sorts of litter left around and not have to cosy up to the people next door because you're supposed to have social distancing. It doesn't seem that many people, particularly younger people, are paying much attention to that. They throw their litter away. Because I suppose they've been taught that. Or at least they've never been disciplined. And as for social... I, I, I on Sunday... I went to a very nice uh, local restaurant and I, I had a, 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 a... Actually, it wasn't Sunday at all, it was Saturday. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I went on Saturday and I, I had a, um, a club sandwich. It's interesting, not many people offer a club sandwich here. Very popular in America, in the United States and Canada. Uh, but anyway, um, I uh, had a, a club sandwich and I, I sat in a corner and uh, had a a beer with it, a glass of beer, actually a big glass of beer, and I enjoyed it very much. But there were a whole bunch of people, uh, young people, the chaps of about 22, 23, and they all sat very close together. The two young waitresses, very attractive ladies they were, and very pleasant and very efficient. But what were they going to do? Say, oi, you, social distancing, please. Oh, these are strapping lads who, if they'd have said, pee off, <laughs> then these girls would have stood, stood no chance. So very wisely, they said nothing. But these guys just were totally and utterly, completely uh, dismissive of social distancing. And if one of them dies, it'll all be the fault of somebody else. That's the problem. It's always somebody else's fault. Now, uh, in my little broadcast world uh, there are a few of us and uh, we, we, we joke it's all your fault <laughs> and, <laughs> and sometimes depending on the situation it is but uh, the fact of the matter is that there is a whole swathe of people out there who think it's somebody else's fault it's the government's fault that we actually have got this virus in the first place well come on get with it what happens is these acts of nature, and it's nature slapping us, in my view, because of our excesses. And we don't learn, do we? No. <laughs> right? You know, part of the problem with these viruses is that we've, we've slashed the countryside to bits. We've slashed nature to pieces. We've littered the seas, the oceans, and nature springs up and slaps us. And do we learn? No. The first thing we do, the moment that there's lockdown or lockup or whatever we want to now call it, is we go and build another thousand houses on, on, on floodplains. I mean, how daft are we? We're suicidal. And the strange thing is, you know, because we've populated the planet, 
We are the species that populated the planet and ripped it apart and abused it. We think that our species will never come to an end. Well, from what I can gather, the authorities are, are thrashing around at the moment because they've got no answer to this virus. And they're now talking about an autumn spike, a Christmas spike. It's going to go on next year. The economy is not going to recover for two years. Where on earth do we think that we are? How are we thinking? All right, you may say, well, Keith, your thinking is a little weird. <laughs> well, my thinking is always a little weird. I'm always accused of that. But the fact is that we don't really think outside the box nowadays. We don't try to say, let, let, let's have some weird thinking and see if anything good comes out of it. Yeah, well, I can remember in, in the middle of, of my career as a journalist is one of the things that, that we discussed at length and uh, interviewed and so on is that some big companies hired bright young people from university and, and not always from university as long as they were bright and their job was to come in and sit down in a room and just talk and that way the company figured ideas would spring most of them would be useless but if they got a nub of two or three they gave them some idea of what they might innovate what new products they might uh, evolve from these discussions then it was all worthwhile do we do that today not to my knowledge we all know what people want to see we know so when we know we make it and we say you have it and the populace says all right because there's no alternative I, we, we've lost our way as, as mankind and I still put it down to computers I am all for computers where they help mankind but not when they run us and they do and as for the Data Protection Act believe me that is a big figment of somebody's imagination it may protect somebody mostly government people I don't care whether find, people find out about me I've got nothing to hide yeah, I've got plenty to hide, but not, not so much that I want a Data Protection Act, because what it does is it stops you getting any information about anything from the authorities. Oh, my goodness me. Surprise, surprise, surprise. Because what they managed to do in this act is say, data protection, you can't do this, you can't do that, and if you get caught doing that, da, 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 right? Uh, except for us. We've got some exceptions. So if we want to find out something about you, we can you want to say, find out something about us? <laughs> well, we, we've got a Freedom of Information Act. And anybody ever tried that? Wow, what a cumbersome piece of legislation that is. And then by the time you actually get the information back, it's heavily redacted. Once again, Freedom of Information Act has got all sorts of clauses in it, exemptions, not worth the paper that's written on, in my view. And I've tried it. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, I said this morning I was thinking about the sea. So I got a couple of things down with the uh, uh, sea in the uh, uh, name. Let's try uh, a sea of memory. How's that? Let's see what that sounds like. Thank you. 
I like that. Yes, very calming and very, because nobody's awake yet. Nobody's really getting up. It's uh, 20 to 7, well, 6.41. I always approximate. If uh, somebody says, I owe you £9.35, Keith, I always say either make it 9 or 10. Don't bother me with 35 pence. That sort of put a hole in my pocket. Uh, in the headlines this morning is uh, increasingly strained relationships with China. Uh, uh, very interesting because I have a number of Chinese friends. Uh, I have a few who actually live in China itself, uh, but I have many who live in Vancouver, uh, a couple in Hong Kong, uh, and several here in the UK. The uh, and certainly Vancouver and. Vancouver is a very interesting case in the history, the recent history of turbulence, if you like. One step back at school, I remember that we had a number of uh, students come from Hungary in the 1950s after the Hungarian Revolution. And then the same thing with uh, Dubček and the Czech Revolution. And when they actually had felt the heavy hand of a big power, people escaped. And of course, there were all sorts of wonderful people who escaped. Artists, journalists, singers, footballers. One of the footballers who escaped from Hungary was Ferenc Puskas, probably one of the greatest footballers of all time. Let's leave it there with Pushkas for a moment and I'll come back to him. But what happens when there are these sort of revolutions is the good people try to overturn a tyrannical administration or remove the shackles of empire from a big power and when it all ends in disaster, some of the good people get away, most of them are thrown into prison, and those that successfully get to some safe haven are criminals and thugs who break out of jail during this turmoil, and the first thing they want to do is just simply get away. And we all accept them. Now, one of the interesting things about uh, the Chinese uh, revolution, the cultural revolution of the 1970s, or the, yes, 1960s, 70s, uh, is the same thing happened. Uh, Vancouver is now a very